On May 16, 2015, the Yaya Network, a youth-led organization focused on social and economic justice, held an event to discuss the increased policing occurring within public schools and its effects on students. If you make them think they're criminals, then they will be. POC like youth, like children, um, are being suspended at a, at a higher rate than like white children. Mm -hmm. um, in contrast, and like um, it'll like be, it'll just follow them throughout their academic career, right? And like they, um, because of like the communities, their communities are disenfranchised, like socially, they're like you know alienated, and like from their academic environment, right? So like. Um, a lot of these people tend to drop out. My family has been directly affected by that. Like my brother um, has had long spells of not going to school specifically to avoid um, the way that he's policed in school and like also um, the relationship that he has to the authority figures. I haven't had any like altercations like running with like the policing or, or any police at all ever. So I didn't like, so like to hear a lot of people who did was like kind of like wow like I didn't even know that was like a thing. I have friends who have been targeted and um, violently like surveyed actually. Um, most of my friends had to transfer out because they felt so unsafe in the schools. Be that, you know, like, because, like me putting my hands on someone else would be like oh mm -hmm. I'm like being violent like being a bad person and then you go put your hands on me and like throw um, me on the ground and put me in I handcuffs and it's like oh you're just doing your job you know. I really felt like what my oppression looked like as like a black woman and like as someone who has like black men in my family. You don't need like 10 like security, like school safety agents like at the desk as soon as you walk in you feel like you just like walked into prison or something every day. Psychologically it's very heavy and physically it's very heavy and it just, it's a segue into like all the ways you're going to be oppressed in the future as an adult and no longer as a student. A lot of students are like approached by SSA and NYPD in schools and they don't know their rights. When they ask them for like certain things like their ID or whatever, they don't know how to advocate for like their right. They don't know what their right is. So how, if you don't know what your right is, how can you say no to someone? You just automatically give them everything that you have. You know, the desire for them to know their rights is like, mainly my brother, and having him, like, exposing the fact that he does have rights to him, because it, it was kind of like a foreign concept to him for a long time, especially given his experiences. And um, having, opening that space for him has, like, allowed us to have a closer relationship and for him to, like, kind of, um, you know, start to seek out spaces where he could, you know, exercise those rights and his voice. There have been um, students and uh, faculty and uh, teachers gathering uh, all over the country um, every day, you know, like protesting for student rights, um, for like um, the way the authority figures, the SSA, the NYPD within schools treat the students themselves. I feel hope and I feel like a restoration or like, you know, kind of like a manifestation of like the powerful like voice that um, students of color and youth do have. We need to start um, asking students about how they feel and take their concerns seriously. Okay, like this is this is this is not a complicated complex like equation to like solve all matters. This is about school. Students know what's right for them.